right guys, so uh, we finished up the heat treat of the knife. Um, and from there I did a, um, I tempered it. So what I ended up doing is just putting it in the oven, 375 degrees for one hour and letting it fully cool down in there. And I did that uh, for three cycles. Um, so what that does is it takes away some of the hardness from the knife, um, but it keeps it from the knife from breaking because when you heat treat the knife, it's very brittle at that point. Very hard, but very brittle. So you kind of want to take a little bit of that hardness away so that way you don't worry about uh, cracking your knife. So now I've cut the, um, the scales that I'm going to be using on here, which is that red oak that Sarah wanted. Um, I've just uh, cleaned up the knife a bit. I'm going to finish the, the, uh, the final polishing and stuff uh, once my handle is done. Now at this point, before I go in and glue my handle on, um, because I did sharpen this um, to shaving sharp, so I'm going to wrap the cutting edge uh, with a bit of tape and stuff. That way, um, don't cut myself in the process. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. And then we're going to get the scales glued on or epoxied on. And tomorrow we will be shaping the handle. And then all I got left is a knife sheath to make. So pretty, pretty excited. I think she's really, really going to like this. Like I said, she's an amazing artist and I want to give her a really good product. Um, am I a professional knife maker? Heck no. I mean, I don't even have a forge yet. Um, but my one thing I'll have to say about my knives is they're dependable, they're sharp, they stay sharp, and they take a heck of a beating. So you can't say that about a lot of modern knives these days. So we'll go ahead and just tape this up. There we go, I've got my scales. These are going to be uh, my inserts that are gonna go through my holes. And these are actually just pieces of copper pipe uh, <laughs> for my camper. So I love using random stuff for this kind of stuff. Um, I just realized I actually don't have any epoxy left. So I'm gonna pick some up tomorrow and tomorrow we are going to glue on these handles and let it sit overnight and then we're gonna start shaping it. So there you go. Gone ahead and epoxied the handle on. Now, at this stage, I would uh, be finishing it on my little grinder. But unfortunately, that little... That bastard is shocking me right now. So obviously, either the switch or something in there is grounding out. I don't... That's going to be a winter project. Pull that thing apart and see what's going on. So I'm going to be... Finishing this all by hand, not a big deal. Uh, been there, done that. Just a lot more work. So I'm gonna go ahead and start to trimming down the wood first. Uh, take my little hacksaw and I'll cut those down and kind of go from there. Use the file, and all that jazz. All right. There she is, all roughed out anyways. So now I'm just gonna continue shaping the handle, make it a bit a little nicer in the hand. Um, yeah, I did have a little piece break right here, but I'll be able to fix that. And you know, I used to get bent out of shape and I did little mistakes and stuff on, on uh, when I built stuff like this, but you know what? The way I see it, it's all those little blemishes, um, especially if it's, if it's only really the builder that knows about these blemishes. 
adds character. You know, so let's say in a hundred years when somebody finds this, going to be like, yeah, you know what? That wasn't made by machine. That was handmade. You can see the little imperfections here and there. So yeah, in the end, really, it just adds a little character to it. And character kind of guy, so it makes sense. Actually, you know what? I just thought about something. So this was a uh, technique I used when I first got into um, knife making. So basically, yeah, just take your grinder, clamp it in nice and tight. Because you don't even want it to move with the vibrations. And have one of these uh, sanding flap discs. And actually this makes pretty quick work of it. So we're going to give that a go. Basically all I did was rough it out and then I took uh, some files and did like the, the, the more contoured um, refinements and all that kind of stuff. So all I got to do now is sand it, stain it. Looking pretty good though. Get, I'm getting there. All I got to do is make a sheath after this. polish I ended up getting on it all by hand like I said my little grinder craft out so basically uh, to polish this up I hit it with 120 220 400 and then I had some 1200 so I hit with that and then I had a it's a bit of a some buffing compound uh, so it turned out pretty good I mean there are some some scratches in it and I did have this one deep gouge but again that's all character in my eyes now i did fire burn the handle a um, couple reasons for that one i just want to give it a little bit of hardness because the heat hardens up the wood a little bit and uh it gives it kind of a it's a natural way to get the grain out now i'm not done just yet i want to share the best part with you guys so actually you know what so I'll show you this. So this is what I've been uh, using lately, and I just love this stuff. So it's True Oil uh, Gunstock Finish. I like it because it actually gives a really nice layer, and it's a little bit more of a, a natural look because the it's made with um, linseed oil, which you guys have been following along. I absolutely love linseed oil. You know, I don't need anything too, too fancy. So, get that grained absolutely pop out. So, there she is. Absolutely beautiful. That red oak looks sick. So basically, I'm just going to do uh, three coats of this, and then she will be ready for a sheath. Uh, I'm going to show you the sheath I, I made. I'm not going to show you how I built it. If you guys want to see a video on how I made this knife sheath that you're about to see, just put it down in the comments, and maybe this winter I'll put one together for you guys. Well, guys, here she is. Finished product. So...
So, like I said, I'm really happy how this turned out. And since this is the first time I've ever made a, a deer hair sheath, there are a couple things I've learned. Now, I will share them with you. First thing is right here, the bell loop. I actually put this fur upside down. Should have been the other way. Uh, same with this. I should have had where the, the grain of the first come down. I should have had it on this side. So it would cover up the stitching a little bit better. Um, and same with the stitching. I should have pulled these loose hairs through. Other than that, like I said, super stoked how it turned out. I am going to be making a couple uh, more for my other knives. Now, one thing about this, uh, this deer hair, it is very, very special. This was from my grandfather's last buck. I, I ended up keeping that hide and I wasn't exactly sure um, what I was going to do with that hide. And well, you know what, I think basically just making sheaths, making things out of it, at least um, the hide's not going to be going to waste and it's going to be out there as memories and all that kind of stuff. So, so anyways, we're going to go present this to Sarah and uh, see what she thinks. Oh, want to get the door? I think somebody's here. Hello. Hi. Who's that? Oh, Sarah's here. Hello. Hi, everyone. Hi, Sarah. How's it going? Great. So, everybody, this is Sarah. This is the, the wonderful lady that I'm going to be trading a logo for that knife, right? So, Olivia, you're going to come right here. Okay. Yeah. All right. So you want to you want to give that give her her knife? Yeah. Okay, you do it. Thank you very much. Oh wow. So, so there it is. Oh, gorgeous. Did you help Daddy make it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I will go over some of the features of it with you. So I know a lot of you guys have already seen the whole build up to this point, right? Um, but there's a couple features on here I haven't shown you guys. Now, one thing I do with all my knives is I give it a really square 90 degrees. And what you know what that's for? No. So if you ever want to get into fire making with a with a fire steel, mm -hmm. this will give you some nice, nice, yes, Daddy. nice uh, sparks. sparks. Daddy, yeah. Yes. Nice. Cool move. Um, again, we we fire we fire hard in the handle. So it gets a nice longevity out of that. Uh, other than that, I mean, it's a pretty basic knife. Now, remember the sheath? I made this for my grandpa's uh, last buck. So I still got a lot, and I'm going to be using this to make a lot of my sheaths. So, so, so here you go. Well, thanks again. Now, I heard you have that, lo is th is that logo in your pocket by any chance? Mm, no. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to put the logo right here. <laughs> so I want you guys to put down in the comments what do you guys think of my new logo like I said this is something new for her um, she wanted to get into logo making for businesses and stuff like that so I thought you know uh, I could probably trade something and get give her a little bit of practice I'm you know what I'm absolutely blown away with this logo um, especially the buck the buck was like the thing that I wanted the most in it because I, I saw some of her drawings and I want to incorporate it in my logo um, so if any of you guys are in the Winnipeg area, can you do this for anybody like outside of town as well? Anywhere, yeah. My last job was in Kosovo. So anyways, so like I said, if you guys want a, a nice logo design, she, she, you, you hand draw everything first and then you yeah. do a digital imprint of it afterwards? Yeah, all digitally now. It's easier. Yeah, so... <laughs> So like and I, I take trades, so anything you're willing to offer. So there you go. So it might be something that you guys are really interested. If not, at least head over to her Instagram channel, and I'll put it, the, the link again right here, and just check out what she has. Like I said, she's very, very talented. Um, you know, like her art is a lot different than a lot of the art that, that you will see around. I mean, she is a little bit hippie inspired and all that kind of stuff, so you get the psychedelicness <laughs> in it, and it's always pretty neat, so... Like I said, I'm really happy with this collaboration. Yeah, me too. I, I really hope that you're really happy with that knife as I well. I really am, yeah. Um, you should be getting lots of years of use out of that. 
and I should be getting lots of years of use out of my logo. Yeah. Um, so I got some stickers coming. So I will be doing, in one of my future videos coming up, I am going to be doing some giveaways with the new stickers. Uh, I want some of my loyal subscribers to be able to have some of those stickers. Also, other YouTubers, if you're in for trade, I already got one of Sask Fisher, Sask Fisher's uh, stickers and I put it on my toolbox. If you guys have a sticker you guys want to send my way, I'll send one your way. All right. Other than that, I mean, it was a great build. I really hope you guys like that uh, kind of content. Again, put that down in the comments. Uh, otherwise, that's all I got. So, if you guys are new to this channel, just check out my other content. If you like it, feel free to subscribe. If not, at least give me a big old thumbs up if you like this content. And we'll talk to you guys next time. Bye.